I'm Stephanie Hirsch. Thank you to Somerville Media Center, also known as SCAT TV, for giving all of us candidates an opportunity to introduce ourselves. I'm really happy to be here. I think places like SCAT TV are so important to our community. They're a place where people meet and work together, like a community living room or a community workshop. So people working together on projects here is one way that SCAT TV creates community. But also the show gets broadcast out to all of you. I remember talking to new moms, and they would say it would be 2 o'clock in the morning, and they'd be rocking and nursing their baby, couldn't sleep. And they'd watch SCAT TV, and they felt part of a community, part of our community of Somerville. And, and I know some of you are homebound. SCAT TV connects people across Somerville, wherever you may be watching from, and whatever your situation may be. With my 10 minutes of fame here on SCAT TV, I'd love to tell you a bit about my background and what I hope to do if I get elected. So today, I'm going to do all of the talking. But when I meet you in person, and I hope I meet every single one of you in the next few months, in the next few years, when I meet you, I want to hear your ideas, and I want to hear you talk. First, about my background. Um, today, I live just outside of Union Square with my family. I have two kids and a husband and some really great neighbors. Um, but I grew up in uh, a community in north central Wisconsin. It's a community that's um, basically the same size as Somerville, but it's different because it's the biggest city for miles and miles around. All around Eau Claire, Wisconsin are farms and forests. Eau Claire, Wisconsin was a really great place to grow up. It had a very strong middle class. and We all lived together in the same streets. We played together in the block, kicked the can, ditch, capture the flag, until our parents called us in to take bath or to, bath or to have dinner. We all went to the same public schools. In fact, there were really no private schools in Wisconsin. And people looked out for each other, and they looked out for the community. And because they had that feeling of community connectedness, they invested in the schools, in our community organizations like the YMC or the Little League. My parents were both teachers. But, and there were people who made more money, like doctors and lawyers and orthodontists. But those were the people. The people who made more, more, more money were the ones who donated to make a new wing of the library or a new part of the Children's Museum. A lot of them probably voted Republican, and some probably voted Democrat, but it really didn't matter. We all agreed that each person in our community matters. I've been door knocking in Somerville since April, and I've reached 3,000 doors so far. And the lifelong residents of Somerville described growing up here in Somerville in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, even into the 80s, just the same way that I remember growing up in Eau Claire. Like, for example, when I was door knocking in the state's Avs, area, also known as nunnery grounds. I met different members of families like the Casessos, the Lapianas, the D'Angelas, and Cantaloupes. And they loved their years growing up. Everyone was like a family on the block, and each kid belonged to everyone, just like in my hometown. That experience of growing up in Eau Claire gave me the value that I've taken with me my whole life, that we're all responsible for every person in our community, and that we all need to take care of our community organizations. After college, I worked in two places where people really struggled. They were really different from Somerville and different from Eau Claire. There were not enough community resources to go around. First, I taught in an elementary school in North Philadelphia in about 1992. And by the school, near the school where I taught, one out of every three houses looked like it had been bombed out. The sidewalk was littered with brightly colored crack vials. They had a little um, brightly colored cap. And then I worked in rural Georgia. Georgia had its own problems. In both places, basically, the systems of education, health care, governance, and public safe safety had almost completely failed. They did not work. There was no strong core middle class. There were very few jobs. And as a result, a lot of people's lives did not work out well. Many, many girls got pregnant before they were 20 years old. And many, many boys had a criminal arrest. Systems had failed these young people, and as a result, these young people had so much trouble growing up and turning into successful providers for their family and successful contributors to their community. I saw how these failures of government affected people, and it broke my heart. I decided to spend my life trying to make government work better so people can have better lives. I studied statistics and finance and business to try to understand how we can improve local government. And using those skills, I went on to work for the city of New York, the Boston Police Department, and then for Somerville. I came to Somerville in 2004. Working in Somerville in the mayor's office and then the superintendent's office, I started programs like Summerstat, 311, ResiStat, and I helped the superintendent 
make decisions as well as teachers make decisions using data. We did a lot in Somerville over the last 12 years, but I want to do a lot more. And if I get elected, I'm going to keep trying to improve how government runs so that the lives of our city's residents are happy and healthy. I want no one to fall through the cracks in my community on my watch. I've had a chance to listen to community hopes and the points of pain in Somerville, Somerville all this spring and summer. As I said, I've been talking to 3,000 different households and I've heard so many different worries. I thought a lot about these conversations, and here's what I hope to work on if I get elected. Affordability is a word we hear throughout the city every walk of life. It's on everybody's mind. It tops almost everybody's list of worries. But it means something different to different people. Someone may live on only $40,000. Lots of seniors are in this situation. So they have trouble paying bills like water and taxes, even though their property may be almost worth almost a million dollars. Meanwhile, young people in Somerville may have two degrees, one from Harvard and one from MIT, so they have a really high earning potential. But they still struggle with student loan debt, and they can't figure out any way to get into the housing market. Low-income renters face the most struggles. As I try to figure out how to address affordability, there are three gr groups that I want to give special attention to. One is families with children. Children in Somerville are almost twice as likely as other residents to be living in poverty. Families generally make less money, have more expenses, have more unique housing needs. They depend more on the city and the schools for services, and they face housing discrimination. Many families will need to move this year, next year, and the decade to come. I think we need to create and preserve housing with families in mind. Next, I believe we need to focus on housing for seniors that allows them to stay in their own neighborhood. And finally, I think we need to have a special focus on middle-income households. They need less support and subsidy, but they do need some kind of technical assistance to get into the housing market. Middle-income families, including municipal employees, are a key part of creating a strong community with that middle class, like I experienced in Eau Claire when I was growing up and like those people in the state's abs talked about in their childhood. What are the affordability tools? There are no easy answers. There is no silver bullet. We have to use all the tools that are available and figure out our way balancing amongst them. Those steps we have to consider and eventually take include holding developers accountable to do as much as they can to build affordable and family-friendly housing. And that includes the smaller investor and develop, the investors and developers who are currently not affected by laws like inclusionary housing, those developers that re that renovate triple-deckers. Moving ahead with zoning and projects, even though they remain a work in progress, we need to be giving owners easy access to tax deferral programs that allow them to forgo paying any taxes until they sell their property. We need to pass a transfer fee that's thoughtfully designed and creates funding for subsidies. We need to set up a, a right of first refusal program that makes it easier for owner occupants to compete with developers for the purchase of a home. We need, do need to add more units, both by enabling easier use of accessory units and by building taller, taller buildings in the transformative districts. And whenever possible, we should add units without adding cars. Finally, we will need to control budget expenses, which may mean discipline in terms of funding new initiatives, including capital projects that in some cases we really desperately need. We have to take all of these approaches. There will be sacrifices and there will be challenges. We need to look for the win-wins and try to get as many people on board. But when there's no opportunity for both sides to be happy, we will need to split the differ difference and to compromise. The next major focus area is quality of life. I just spent the last three weeks in Winter Hill and East Somerville. And in East Somerville, I must say, almost every single household talked about rats. It was a very unifying theme. Whatever their political views were, they all were worried about the rats. And many people throughout the city have also talked about cut through traffic and a feeling of being unsafe on and around streets. These are tough issues to fix too in their own way, but I promise to redouble our efforts to find solutions. So even as we think about the big picture, we need to keep focusing on the little things, those day-to-day -day issues that weigh on our peace of, a mind, peace of mind. I care a lot about community. Um, I believe that having strong, integrated, accessible community institutions like SCAT TV, like the YMCA's, like our schools, those help people be happy and they help people form friendships. I will work hard to add funding for recreation 
and support for community-based providers to do more out-of-school programming and activities for people of all ages. I'd like all the city's public buildings to be open from 6 a.m. until 10 p.m. every day of the year. I'd like new community space in each of our squares. And we need to make progress on improving and expanding our athletic field space. In addition to community organizations, I am going to focus on building community in every form. Those institutions help us meet and make friendships, but there's lots of ways we can connect. <clears throat> I believe the more we know and understand one another's needs, the better able we'll be to make the hard decisions. I will work to form neighborhood groups in each neighborhood, helping people set up ways to communicate in annual events, goals and measures of neighborhood goals. And just a special note, in door knocking, I have often heard a division among people in Somerville that's rooted in people's own unique struggles. Some people here do not feel heard. As one of the most poignant examples, Somerville has experienced at least 20 deaths to opioid overdoses in the last two years. And those deaths were concentrated in a smaller demographic group within Somerville. It feels like we should be shouting that statistic from every rooftop, but that's not happening. So when I think about the concept of one Somerville, I believe we need to have the most inclusive definition. We need to look at everybody's experience of pain and everybody's hopes so that we can increase understanding for one another. Next, I will work on transparency. I will work to make the decisions of our local government as clear and understandable to everybody as possible. In particular, on the school side, I believe we need to give more information, share more information about district budgeting and, de and decision making. On the city side, I will dig into publicly available data on any issue that residents care about. And I know a lot about data. We can use data to set goals and metrics and regularly report on them. One of my personal heroes, Mor heroes Maura Healy, she has a promise to serve as a people's lawyer. And I promise to be the people's bean counter. And maybe you didn't even know that you wanted your own bean counter. But I plan to prove that having a bean counter, analyzing data, is a very powerful tool for change. Other goals I have, to, if I'm elected, is to help settle the open contracts with our municipal unions and to support the work of environmental groups like Mothers Out Front. You may be thinking, all this sounds hard, and I agree. Should we do it? I think yes. Almost no place, no community, has figured out how to stay connected, integrated, and well run in 2017. Let's us in Somerville do that, even if it means sacrifice and compromise, hustling and bootstrapping our way to groundbreaking policy. Let's us in Somerville be the proving ground and the antidote to a country that's being pulled apart by income inequality and division. So that's a little about me, my background, and what I care about. But I'm learning as I go, and I'm learning from you. I have another 6,000 doors to knock and I hope to meet you on your front step. And when we meet, please tell me your hopes and worries. Give me your feedback on everything I've said, and we will figure out what to do about each issue together. Thank you again to SCAT TV for this great opportunity.